This video is brought to you by Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro. So, as soon as we moved into the new studio last month, we put back together my setup from the old place, which I had tweaked to my liking over the course of last year. The moment I sat down on it, however, I got delivered of a huge package from a company called Hexcal. Unboxing the product inside just screamed to me to start a desk setup from scratch, while finally resolving my previous inability to plug in my custom PC. So after weeks of trial and error, we managed to create the ultimate 3-in-1 or 4-in-1 workstation depending on how you look at it. This desk setup is ideal for professional graphic and video work and both PC and console gaming, all while using one set of peripherals and speakers and having plenty of display flexibility and real estate in a relatively small footprint of 31 by 63 inches. This is an inspiration video and as such, if you think some of the items will resonate well with your setup, I'll be sure to put all the items links chronologically below. This is a center top stack setup or CTS, which if you're interested, I initially experimented with in my dual monitor setup guide, which I'll link at the end of this video. Since I tend to lean back with the chair a lot and in my desire to keep the desk fairly compact, I didn't want to go for a side-by-side -side configuration because that wouldn't leave space for the PC console nor the speakers. Talking about the desk, I kept the autonomous motorized legs from my previous setups, but stretched them all the way to the end of the 63 inch tabletop to ensure everything is rock solid when moving up and down. The tabletop itself is from Ikea and it's called Throtten. And if you're looking for a wide surface that can withstand the test of time, I couldn't recommend this tabletop more. It's thin yet super stiff and sturdy featuring a textured surface that doesn't scratch easily and stays white over time. The huge package from Hexcal I mentioned in the beginning is their studio workstation, which is unlike anything else I've seen in the desk setup market. It is sort of like a shelf, entirely made from metal, being able to provide power to 14 electronic devices. The lid on the top slides out to uncover a huge cable management compartment, which is able to engulf and hide pretty much all the power cables and adapters of this setup. With the Hexcal Studio, we didn't have to worry about additional cable management trays or anything else to hide underneath the tabletop itself, especially considering it has eight power outlets on the back and pass-through USB ports. All we had to do is tuck all the bricks and route the cables according to the setup to then slide the lid back on and close everything shut. We initially had the hex cowl raised all the way up with the help of the provider risers, but after I decided to go for the dual vertical stack direction, we lowered it down, which made the front lighting system stand out even more. Talking about lighting, there are plenty of presets one can choose from, which eliminates the need of thinking in the direction of a desk light, making everything look very chill at night. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Now my primary device on this setup is the M3 Max MacBook Pro, which I invested in as soon as it came out. It features maxed out specs and it's plenty powerful to render anything I throw at it. The only monitor that gives this laptop and my video workflow justice is the studio display. Although I tried working from other monitors, there were always some colors I could only witness on this 5K Apple monitor, so it is my primary one here. But I also wanted a gaming monitor that I could use as a secondary display when video editing to hold my library, while serving as a primary one when playing on the PC or the console. So I ended up purchasing an LG Ultra Gear. This is an older LG display, which is still on the market. And what drove me to it is the combination of 27 inches, 4K resolution and high refresh rate in an almost even frame with thin bezels and minimal gaming vibes. This monitor is not as bright as my studio display, but given my position of the desk and the lack of rear facing windows, I have zero complaints. I have three inconveniences, however, with this display that I can actually live with, but it's worth pointing out. First of all, it doesn't support USB-C power delivery, which could have made it a great all-rounder in a single monitor configuration. Second, the on-screen controls are on the bottom, which is typical for LG, but in order for me to access them, I have to lower down the studio display, which thankfully is on the adjustable stand and does that effortlessly. Now, before you say it, I could have rotated the LG upside down, but that wouldn't have worked with the PS5 unless I'm missing something. And you can let me know in the comments if there's a way to rotate the PS5 picture via the settings. The third inconvenience with this monitor is that it doesn't have a built-in KVM switch, but I managed to solve my peripherals needs with clever software, which I'll talk about in a second. 
When it comes to clever software, Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro stands out as the ideal tool for managing and optimizing the performance of both my computers. With just a single click, it allows me to visualize, manage, and free up storage space effortless. The clean and user-friendly interface of Cleaner One Pro enables me to swiftly remove unnecessary files and identify the items consuming the most disk space through the built-in disk map feature. This helps me relocate and remove files, ensuring that my system remains clean and organized. One of my favorite features is the App Manager which allows me to uninstall application properly without leaving any hidden library files behind. Additionally, the toolbar provides a convenient overview of my computer's performance, including memory and CPU usage, battery status, and more. There are other impressive features to talk about, such as the ability to identify and remove similar-looking images, as well as duplicate files, or the Startup Manager, which easily manages startup apps and services. But I encourage you to explore Cleaner One Pro yourself for free by following the very first link in the description below. So, in order for me to use the same set of peripherals between the PC and the Mac, I remembered about Logitech's awesome feature called Flow. Once I installed Logi Options Plus on both operating systems and paired the Mac on channel 1 and the PC on channel 2, it was a matter of going to the settings of the MX Master 3S and enabling Flow. Just like arranging the display settings on the Mac, I pointed out that the Windows lives on the top and the Mac is on the bottom, and through dark magic, I witnessed my cursor moving from one OS to the other. Initially, when I set up Flow, I thought I will be using the function keys of the MX keyboard to switch between the sources of the Mac and the PC. But then I figured that if I go under the settings of the MX Master, the Flow, there is a button More Settings. So under here, there are two very important things to remember. Now, first of all, moving the mouse between the Mac and the PC is very easy to trigger. So if you want to go to the menu bar of the Mac, you can accidentally end up going to the PC, then there's a bit of a lag, then you'll have to go back, deal with the lag again, and do that unintentionally. So to fight this problem, there's an option to hold the control key on the keyboard, and then allow the cursor to move to the other computer, which is very handy. Furthermore, under the keyboard option, I can link the keyboard, the MX Mechanical Mini, to switch between the devices automatically as soon as the cursor moves over to the other operating system. With Logitech's Flow, I'm able to copy and paste stuff between both OSs, which is super cool. Now, it is not as fast as transferring files with, let's say, AirDrop, but this convenience in a pinch is priceless. Neither the MX Keys nor the MX Master 3S are great gaming peripherals, but I'm no competitor, so they suit me perfectly. Continuing the topic of flowing integrations, leaning on the hex cow, I have placed my 11-inch iPad Pro, which I ran a charging cable for, plugged in directly to the MacBook. Aside from charging, this direct connection reduces any lag when I decide to use the iPad as a third Mac display via sidecar. By the way, if you're interested about how to get the most out of your Mac, check out my guide right here. So, in this configuration, I can not only charge my iPad while using it as my messaging and writing tool in the means of universal control, but also as an additional monitor. There's so much flexibility here. I could have the Mac and Windows running on the larger displays at the same time, while being able to move between them effortlessly and at the same time having two Mac monitors. Now, to accommodate the 4-in-1 sound needs, I've placed the JBL 104 BT reference monitors from my last desk setup episode and have connected them three ways. The main connection runs to my dock, which I'll talk more about in a moment, providing sound to the Mac. Additionally, the speakers are connected to the LG monitor, driving sound to either the PC or the PS5, depending on which input meta on the monitor is enabled. Lastly, via Bluetooth, I've paired the iPad. And what's clutch here is that I can switch the JBLs to source all and allow all devices to play without me having to manually switch sources when needed, and that led to this. Okay, so the JBL speakers are right now switched to source all, which means it will play sound no matter which uh, source I'm playing. So with that, I'll try to do a little mix. <laughs> Let's see how it turns out. First of all, I'm gonna play the rhythm on the Mac. Then I'll slide over to the PC. I think it's getting along nicely. 
Then I'll go back to the iPad, which is connected via Bluetooth. <laughs> now, if you want to keep things to myself and not annoy the people around me, I have the AirPods Max, which are connected to both the Mac and Windows. Now, because of iCloud, they're also connected to the iPad, so they serve this setup ideally. To keep them topped up, I'm hanging them on a bank stand, which I've tied a lightning cable to, while having a wireless charger pad should I decide to place some earbuds on top to charge them as well. The main charging unit on the desk is by Ugreen and it's called 100 watts GAN MagSafe power station. With it, I can not only charge anything MagSafe at 15 watts, but also plug in and fast charge pretty much any other device via the USB-A and USB-C ports, including laptops. Most of the cables on this desk run via the CalDigit TS4 dock, which for the most part is equipped to run with the Mac. The docks makes this dual and triple Mac monitor setup possible while giving me additional USB-C ports to hook up drives and SD cards. As you can expect, the Mac is staying charged via the dock and not via the studio display. Talking about flexibility, since I keep the MacBook in clamshell mode on the left, and I'll put a link to the stand in the description, I have yet another SD slot available when we dump footage from all the SD cards. So before I move to some desk accessories, the other two major players on this setup are of course the PS5 and the custom PC. The PC at this point is rather dated and I have a dedicated video on assembling it together with my friend Dimitri from Hardware Canucks. The only difference here is they upgraded Evolve Shift XT case with the Glacier 1 liquid cooling system. As for specs, I'll list them here and I'd say that they're more than enough to satisfy my occasional Age of Empire needs as well as the ability to test cross-platform apps and solutions. The PS5 is very new to me and to this setup, and aside from everything Marvel and Iron Man related, which is my son's obsession, I'd love to hear some game recommendations from you if you can in the description. Okay, so let me show you my desk accessories. As someone who's not a fan of leather pads, since I find them very sticky and resistant for the mouse, this Balolo leather pad is something entirely different. Made from real leather and smelling absolutely fantastic, it is the first leather pad I've tried that works great with pretty much all mice. The MX Master, for example, glides like a gaming mouse, and I couldn't be happier because together with this small version, it is all the class this desk was missing. These pads are a bit of an exclusive, by the way, as they are yet to be released on Balolo's website by the end of this month, so stay tuned if you're looking for a high-quality leather pad. Next, I've put all my pens in Balolo's pen holder in black and to keep the theme running, I'm also using Orbit Keys Compendium at my side. This A5 version of black leather notebook cover is used daily to write down shot ideas and lists. Finally, to tie all the screens, I've placed my favorite Divoom Timesgate clock, which you can find more about in this video right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.